how Hindutva hatred is jeopardizing India's Gulf ties and rest of the world. Now, when the world is grappling with extraordinary challenge posed by the coronavirus pandemic, all of a sudden, tweets on social media and reports on mainstream television and newspaper columns are wash with harsh and angry exchanges between India's Hindu nationalists and some sections of the Gulf's elite royal family members, business persons, professionals, and human rights activists. These exchanges began innocuously enough in an exchange between two Indians, a resident in the UAE, Surhab Upadaya, who heads a consultancy firm, tweeted abusive messages about members of the Tablighi Jamaat. He inter fear with the tablighi spitting on people as a new form of jihad. He ended his virulent message with death to radical Islam tablighi terrorists and other radical Islamic sons of Satan. To this he added some choice of expletive words in Romanized Hindi of abusive language. Then there is the war of tweets. In a unique development in Gulf countries, a member of the Sharjah Royal House, Sheikh Sheikha Hend Al Qasimi, responded to this tweet, recalling her family's close ties with India. The Sheikha said, "Your rudeness is not welcome. You make your bread and butter from this land, which you scorn and you ridicule will not go unnoticed." She then quoted UAE laws prohibiting hate and speech by citizens and non-citizens. This royal intervention has opened the floodgates to comments from other sources. An, an academic based in the U.S. specializing in Islamophobia, Khalid Bedouin, wrote in the New Arab about how the entire Indian Muslim community had been stigmatized for transgressions of the tablighis. They were being scapegoated as disseminators of the novel virus in India through such accusations as Corona Jihad and Muslim virus. He said that Islamophobia in India was state-sponsored and referring to the communal riots in Delhi in February held Prime Minister Modi responsible for the spread of this pandemic violence. He thought that this novel strain of the Hindutva menace was capitalizing on national anxiety due to the global pandemic to demonize Muslims further. A religious scholar in Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Abadi al Zahran, called for the listing of militant Hindus in the Gulf Cooperation GCC countries who were spreading hate against Islam. Muslims are our beloved prophet under the hashtag send Hindutva back home. In another tweet, he noted that millions of Indians lived in the Gulf and were treated free of charge if they were infected by COVID-19 virus, while Hindutva terrorist gangs are committing crimes against Muslim citizens in India. Another Gulf resident, Preeti Giri, an executive director with the major local company in her tweet told her followers that actor Amir Khan belonged to the Tablighi Jamaat, which was Sunni and Hanafi ideology, which was 99% Diobandi. She exhorted them not to be so naive as to run after his films. A prominent Emirati businesswoman, Noura al ghurairi reprimanded Giri, By your hateful logic, Sunnis by association are terrorists because of propaganda against Muslims in India. Then she said to these Indian nationalists, Do you know in the country that you live in, all rulers of Arab states are Sunnis? You want to boycott us? Indian hate campaign bleeds into Gulf. While these exchanges were on tweets by the BJP member of parliament, TGCV Surya from 2015 quoting the self-styled Islamic scholar Tariq Fatah, who has been popular in Hindu Tava circles in India a few years ago, cropped up. The tweet said 95% Arab women never had an orgasm in the last few hundred years. Every mother has produced kids as an act of sex and not love. This is what Indians think of Arab women. A commentator then from Kuwait, Abdul Rahman Nassar, tweeted directly to Prime Minister Modi, insisting that Tejisivi Surya be deprived of his parliamentary membership. He told the Prime Minister that Indians in Kuwait constitute the largest community among those infected with the coronavirus and were being treated in the best hospitals. He reminded Modi 
that Indians remitted billions of dollars to their country and you better take care of nationalist Hindus, BJP, and, and how are Muslims treated in India, he asked. But he got no response from the Prime Minister Modi, obviously. The vital question is, was this message intended for his supporters, BJP, who have been fanning hatred towards Muslims? Or was it just to put it on record that Prime Minister was opposed to religious profiling of coronavirus patients? Modi's messaging is odd on two counts. One, if this is indeed aimed at signaling to the proverbial bakhts or blind supporters, or it is to malign Muslims in general. Or secondly, a smear campaign does not contend that the virus chooses victims on basis of their religious identity and it instead depicts Muslims as the chief and willful carriers of pandemic in the country. Why is this inver intervention can be seen half-hearted is because the hate campaign against Muslims on social media has been rampant within the country for a few years, but it has now only seriously entered Gulf consciousness. And the traffic today consumed by Hindutva narrative and the Gulf nationalists expressing their sentiments ferociously. Senior political leaders publicly spoke of Muslims as human bombs and enemies of humanity. Corona jihad and Muslim virus have entered the national vocabulary and stayed in the Indian mindset. The Gulf countries have now for the first time woken up to a scourge of extremist Hindu Teva to which they had so far paid little attention. It will come as a big as a surprise to Hindu Teva that despite periodic rhetoric, faith has hardly played any role in determining the direction and strength of a Gulf country's ties with India. Though the Cold War and GCC countries were tied to Pakistan politically and militarily, not because it was Muslim country, but because they were allies in the same side of the global divide, their ties being cemented by the shared affiliation. Indians, however, are the largest expatriate community in every country of the Gulf states and are majority in three countries, the UAE, Bahrain and Qatar. The profile of the community has also changed. In 1990, it was 90% blue collar. Today, though six times larger, it is about 65-70% to blue collar, with at least 20% being professionals, engineers, doctors, managers and accountants. Hundreds of Indians chartered accountants hold distinguished positions in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Oman and dominate upper levels of financial sector and just a quote from my Arabic Wallah kullu Hindu Hindi kullu harami awal darja click like if you like the today's video click the red button to see more of the videos and hope to see you next video enjoy this video then must have a look at these videos.